Welcome back to AP Chemistry and General Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this lesson we're going to be learning about solution chemistry, some of the basic vocabulary behind solution chemistry, and we're also going to learn about how to calculate molarity and mole fraction, very important units of solution concentration. If you like the video, learn something. If you'd be so kind as to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, that would be wonderful. Well, we're going to go ahead and start by looking at the components of a solution in this lesson. So there are some fundamentals of solutions before we even start talking about the calculations therein. First of all, we have the solvent. Now the solvent is the medium into which something gets dissolved. So you probably understand that the most common solvent that we use in AP chemistry and in general chemistry is, is water. And so water is an important solvent. Uh, but it's not the only one. There are other organic solvents. We could use benzene or carbon tetrachloride. All, all kinds of things can be used as solvents. Uh, we also have the solute. Now the solutes are things that get dissolved into that medium or into that solute. So for example, if you're going to be making a solution of salt water, well the water would be acting as the solvent in this case and then the salt that you dissolve in there, that's the solute. And like I said earlier, water is by far the most uh, uh, common solvent that we use in, in most of our life, in most of, of uh, general chemistry and first year chemistry, AP chemistry. In fact, it's called the universal solvent because we use it so often. In fact, it's often said that if you have enough water and you have enough time, water will dissolve just about anything. And we see that for the most part that's that's true. Uh, we'll talk more about that in depth in the solubility section of this course which is pretty far into the future with uh, solubility products and things like that. Now let's take a look at a couple of solutions. Here we have a solution, in fact these are both solutions of the same solute actually. <laughs> they both have water as the solvent and they both have the same solute, copper to sulfate. But as you can see they are different. I'm not saying that one has more volume. That's, that's pretty obvious. But there's something else that's different here too. Do you see the difference? You can just look at that and see that the one on the right over here is, uh, shall we say, bluer. You know, it just has a, a bluer uh, color. It has a deeper color to it. Well, it, that is telling us that that particular uh, solution, the one on the right, has a higher concentration. Now, when we think about higher concentration versus a lower concentration, let's think about that in terms of particles. How are the particles that make up these two mixtures different from each other? Well, hopefully you realize that the one on the right has particles that are, uh, when we say more concentrated, that means that they are packed more tightly to each uh, together. So for example, if we're going to like zoom in on this, we can say that the molecules of the solute are more compact. And you can see that they're pretty close to each other. Whereas in the one that's more dilute, the particles of solute are not as close to each other. Now this is not drawn to scale. This is not uh, exact, but you kind of get the idea. It's a bit exaggerated, but you get the idea. The one that has the higher concentration has the particles of solute that are closer to each other. They're more compact. Now, as we talk about important types of solutions, we can talk about dilute solutions. Dilute solutions have a relatively low amount of solute. So in a, in a solution like the copper 2 sulfate that we have here, it's going to be fairly uh, uh, pale in color compared to something that's more concentrated. Concentrated has a relatively high amount of solute in solution. So here's the, the same one we had earlier. We can see that they have deeper uh, colors if they're concentrated. So we have a good example of that there. Now if you keep dissolving solute into a solvent, just keep dissolving and keep dissolving and keep dissolving, are you going to be able to do that forever? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that the answer is no. There's going to be a point at which you will no longer be able to dissolve solute into that solvent at that temperature. And that's called saturated. So if you just keep adding solute and keep trying to dissolve, eventually you get to this maximum point. 
And in the laboratory, what this usually looks like is, is something like this. We've added so much and we've kept stirring that not all of it dissolves. And there's a little a pile of the, of the solute at the bottom of the beaker. So that's a good sign that tells us that this is a, a saturated solution after we've you know, tried stirring this for several minutes and it doesn't all dissolve. It's already dissolved the maximum amount at that temperature. Now, is it possible to go over the maximum? Well, as it turns out, it actually is under certain circumstances. This is called a supersaturated solution. And here's a picture of what we can do with a supersaturated solution. And I, I do have a, a separate video on making a supersaturated solution. I'll put that in the description of the video. But this is where you have a concentrated solution that's temporarily dissolved more than the maximum amount of solute. Maybe you're wondering, how do you do this? Well, you kind of have to basically trick the solution. That's, that's not the best word, but you're basically doing that. You're tricking the solution into temporarily dissolving more than the max by raising the temperature. So in practice, what you do is you would raise the temperature of the solvent using a, a burner or a hot plate or something. And once it's nice and warm, you dissolve lots and lots of solute in there lots and lots of solute. And you keep stirring, keep dissolving until you've, you've dissolved lots of solute into that solvent. And then you cut the heat off and you start allowing the temperature to slowly drop. And when the temperature drops back down to, oh, let's say room temperature, you have temporarily allowed or, or caused that solution to, to dissolve more than it's supposed to at room temperature. Now this is a temporary state. And what happens if you drop a little seed crystal or even disturb it or jostle around that beaker very much is it starts to, to flash crystallize, kind of like we have in this beaker over here. It just, you know, flash crystallizes. And in the case of what this is, most likely sodium acetate, it's a highly uh, exothermic process and it gives off quite a bit of heat. And we can actually harness this process for chemical heat packs. And so in my supersaturated solutions video, you can take a look at that as well. Well, let's talk about how we quantitatively talk about solutions because all those other words were just, you know, qualitative values, you know, dilute, concentrated, those are all relative terms. But when we talk about the, the actual mathematics behind this, molarity is the primary unit of concentration that we use in chemistry. And the way we calculate molarity is we take the moles of solute and we divide by liters of solution. So let's try an example with this. Here we have a student produces a, a solution by adding 0.711 grams of tin 2 chloride to enough distilled water to make 75.0 milliliters of solution. Calculate the molarity of this solution. So you might notice that it's moles divided by liters. Well, we're given an answer, or we're actually given a value in grams, so we have to convert that to moles. So let's do that. We have our 0.711 grams of tin 2 chloride, and we're gonna convert that to moles. So that means grams have to be on the bottom, one mole is on top, and if we look at the periodic table, we can see that one mole of tin 2 chloride has a mass of about 189.62 grams. And so we can divide that on our calculator, and we have an answer of about 0 0.00375 moles. Well, that takes care of our moles part of the equation. How about the liters? Well, hopefully you realize that 75.0 milliliters is the same as 0 0.0750 liters. So now we can divide that out, and we get an answer of about 0 0.0500 molar. So the way that you read that capital M, it's pronounced as <laughs> molar. So let me just write that out. Don't pronounce it as M or something like that. It's pronounced 0 0.0500 molar. So use that as the unit for concentration of a solution. Now that's not the only concentration uh, or solution concentration unit we could use. We could have mole fraction as well. And mole fraction is abbreviated with a capital X. This is another uh, very good solution concentration unit that we use sometimes. And the X, like I said, is the mole fraction 
of the substance. And it's a ratio. And as a result, it's one of the few values in AP chemistry that we have that doesn't actually have a unit. So that's kind of neat. It's a, an actual unitless value. And it's determined by taking the moles of the substance and dividing it by the total moles of all the substances in that solution. So that's the sum of the components, the solute, the solvent. It may be more than one solute if there are, are, are multiple solutes in there. Let's try an example. Let's say we have a solution where 10.00 grams of sucrose have been dissolved in 400.0 grams of water. Let's calculate the mole fraction of that. Well, if we're going to do that, we're going to have to find the moles of the substance. Let's find the moles of sucrose we have here. So 10.00 grams of sucrose listed here in the problem. We'll write that out and we have to convert that to moles first of all. So once again, grams on the bottom one mole on top, and if we add the molar masses of all these uh, elements together, we have 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, 11 oxygens, that's a sum of about 342.30 grams total. So when you divide that out, it's about 0 0.02921 moles of sucrose. Now, the denominator part of this is the total moles. So we have the moles of the solute. Now we have to find the moles of the solvent, the 400 grams of water. So separately, we're going to take 400 grams of water and convert that to moles as well. So grams on bottom, one mole on top. The periodic table tells us that there are about 18.02 grams in a mole of water. And when you divide that out, it's about 22 0.20 moles of water. Well now we can calculate the mole fraction. So it's the moles of the sucrose divided by the total moles. So we have to add the 0 0.02921 plus the 22.20 moles of water. So we add those together and if you key that into your calculator you get an answer of about 1.314 times 10 to the negative third. And so that's the mole fraction of sucrose. So that's the x for this substance. And you could do the same thing for the mole fraction of water if you wanted to do that. Of course, you'd find that the mole fractions of all the substances in a, in a solution or in a mixture should add up to 1 if you're doing everything correctly. Well, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. Hope you all uh, do wonderfully on the solution chemistry section of AP Chemistry. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.